Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to start from scratch and format your paper in MLA formatting style uh, in Microsoft Word. So at the end of this video, uh, you should be able to, uh, from scratch, uh, format your entire essay so that it looks just like my essay template here. All right, so let's get started. So just so you know, I am working in Microsoft Word. It is, it's actually Microsoft Word for Mac version 16.43, and I'm working on a Mac. Uh, it's uh, Mac OS uh, Big Sur version 11. I'm not a tech person, so I, I don't know the difference between the versions, but just so you know, it, it, just in case that means something to you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I, I opened up a brand new document. I've done nothing to it. Okay, and I want to show you how to format your paper in MLA style uh, from scratch, like I said. So here we go. I've opened up a new document. Now with MLA formatting, every essay that you need to write should be double spaced. Your margins need to be one inch margins on the top, bottom, left, and right. Uh, the entire essay usually is going to be in Times New Roman 12 point font and you're going to have a heading and the entire essay should be double spaced okay so there is no one way to get started with it you can usually you're either going to do your heading or your last name and page number but i'm going to go ahead and get started with our heading okay so i was just going to roll with uh, sally smith is the name that we have on our template now before you even start typing though don't forget so now when I opened up this fresh Word document, it started in Calibri, okay? But I want Times New Roman, so, um, oh yeah, this is on my recent fonts, so that's convenient for me, but maybe that won't be there for you. When you click on this, you might have to go all the way down all into your fonts. It's in alphabetical order, so it's usually, it's pretty easy, um, but just so you know, it, but... If you've already used Times New Roman, it'll be on your recent fonts there, and, and it's usually, that's a lot more convenient. You just click on that. But anyways, uh, I clicked on Times New Roman. Now we have our font set up. Now everything in the body of the essay is going to be Times New Roman. Notice that my margins are one inches on the top, one inch margins, top left, and on the right. So that is good to go. If you were worried about what your margins are, uh, just so you know, you go, you click on layout to figure out what your margins are. You click on layout here. It's uh, indent left and right. You see that's set to, oh, excuse me. That's the indenting. Where's the margins? Oh, it's on this tab right here. Uh, it, it, it should be, when you open up a document, it should be normal set to one inch on all sides. So you usually don't have to worry about it. So, But just, just in case you wanted to know, that's where you go to look for it. Uh, but we're set there. The first line of, like I said, I'm going to start with a heading. The first line of your essay should be your first and last name. Okay, so um, we're going to say Sally Smith. Uh, okay, yeah. And like I said, in MLA formatting, every essay should be double spaced, no more, no less, throughout the entire essay. So what you do to fix the uh, spacing, the line spacing, is, is go to this one with the little arrows. Uh, line and paragraph spacing, click on that and go to 2.0. So now the entire essay is set for double space. So all I have to do is hit enter once to go to the next line and everything. Now the next line of your heading is going to be your professor's name, your instructor's name. Uh, there is no one way to <laughs> there is no one way to do this in MLA style. Um, it can say professor, Mr., Mrs., Miss, uh, a doctor. It, it, it just depends on what your um, what your instructor wants. And if you don't know what they want, um, your best bet is to just put professor in their last name. But usually you want professor or mister for, for one because it's formal, but two because if you have just two first and last names, it's it's confusing when you look at it. You're not sure who's the student, who's the the instructor. But anyways, um, it, that'll. Dip, but if you're not sure, just ask your instructor. They'll tell you what what to put there. The next line is going to be the course. Uh, it's usually the subject, the course number, and the section number. And there's no one way to do this. A good bet is to look at your syllabus. So on my syllabus, my 1301 class is listed like this. 
So it's English, it's 1301, and the section, the one I'm looking at right now is section 14. You know, th this could be all caps. Sometimes people do it like this, and there's no space in between it. There is no one right way to do it in uh, MLA formatting, so that will be up to your instructor as well. Some people even spell it out English. Again, there's no one way to do it. Um, but yeah, so you get your last name, instructor's name, de uh, the course. The last line of your heading will be the date. Now, there is one way to do this in MLA formatting. They have a specific way they want you to do the date, so pay attention to this because you can't just do the formatting of the date any way you want. Now, the way they have you do it is you write the, the day of the month, and if it was like the fourth, I think you put, you need two digits. You put zero four. But anyways, you do the day, the month, and you have to spell it out, okay? You have to spell out the month no matter what month it is. Don't use two, don't just use three letters. You have to spell out the month and then you put the year. And there's one space in between all of this, okay? And that's the way they want it done in MLA formatting. Now, the next line of my essay under the heading will be the title. But the title is centered, okay? Uh, but it's not, the title isn't two spaces down. There's nothing special about it. In MLA formatting, everything is just one double space, no more, no less, okay? So I hit enter once. Now I need to center my title, though. So I go to center text, click on this, and then I write the title of my essay. Uh, you'll need to, you know, you'll learn in class how to format titles. But just so you know, you never bold your title. You never underline it. You never make the font bigger than everything else. Uh, it, you can use quotation marks, but you would use those if you were, like, writing about uh, a, a short story or, or a song or something like that. There's specific things in MLA formatting that take quotation marks. But a title in general, you don't put quotation marks around it, okay? You don't bold it. You don't underline it. So you just write the title of your essay. You're going to hit enter once. You're, but don't start writing your essay uh, after that. You, uh, you hit enter once, and then you're going to need to align it to the left, okay? You want to make sure you do that because I've seen entire essays written, and the whole thing was centered, and that's a mistake. The body of your essay needs to be just like your heading. It needs to be aligned all the way to the left, Okay, now, but one more thing before you start writing, at the beginning of each S, at the beginning of each paragraph, you need to indent half an inch the first line of each paragraph, okay? And you do that by hitting the tab key, all right? So uh, uh, some students want to hit space a few times. They know they need to indent, but they're not sure what to do. But uh, you hit the tab key once, okay? And as you see, it indents it half an inch. And then you just start writing your essay. The first line of each paragraph will be indented. The following lines will be aligned all the way to the left. So I'll show you how that is. Um, I'll just write some random sentence. Okay, you know, just, just whatever you're going to be writing in your essay. And you notice uh, this first line spilled over into the second line. And um, because I hit tab here, the first line is indented. The rest of them are all going to be aligned to the left. If I kept writing and my next sentence spilled over, it would go all the way over here to the left. Um, and that, and you know, that helps your reader know when each paragraph begins. If you don't hit the tab key, it makes it hard on your readers sometimes to try to figure out when one paragraph ends and one begins. Okay. So you always want to make sure you do that. Um, and then, yeah. So whenever, whenever I'm done with however many sentences I write in this paragraph, I'm going to hit enter once and then I'm going to hit tab again. And that's when I'm going to start writing my next paragraph. Okay. Uh, so so that's how it's going to start looking. Now, don't forget that we said in every MLA formatted paper, you need the, your last name and page number at the top right, okay? And um, now some of my students I see, uh, they try to write their, they try to put in their last name, and they know it needs to go to the top right, and they think, well, uh, if my first and last name are on the first line, then if, I need, if it's going to be at the top right, I need to put it on the first line and hit 
tab all the way over here till it comes over here, but that's not the way to do it, okay? In fact, your, your last name should not be on the same line as your first and last name. Um, your last name and page number go in what's called the, it goes in what's called the header of the essay. And, you know, like right here, I'm on the first line of the essay. If I hit the up arrow, it actually won't go anywhere because I'm on the first line of the essay. It doesn't get any higher than that, okay? And, and if, even if I click up in this space, it, it won't do anything. Uh, in Word, to get into the header, you have to, this is the header of the essay, by the way, this space right here. To get into the header, you have to double click up here, okay? So I just double clicked. You see, it took me up into the header. Now we want our last name and page number to be at the top right of every uh, doc at every at the top of top right of every M MLA formatted essay. Okay, um, so f there's two things you need. One, you need the page number, and two, you need l your last name. In Word, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the page number in because whenever you double click into the header, it automatically takes you to this header and footer menu. So let's go ahead and do this. You, you to insert your page number. It's, you can do it one of two ways. You can go all the way to the top menu and hit insert, and then come down um, to page numbers. But with this version of Word, and the easiest way is to go right here to page number, and then click uh, page number. Okay. Now we want it at the top right. Right. We're in the header, so it knows it knows we want it in the header. Uh, we just need to make sure that we're putting it on the right, okay? And um, show number on first page. Okay, yeah, you, this is exactly what you want. So you hit OK, and you see that it puts your page number over here on the right of the page. Now, you still need to do a couple things. One is you need to write your last name. Oh, we're going with Smith. Okay, and that needs to be aligned to the right. It needs to be just... It actually needs to just be one space away from this. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But one thing I want you to notice is that this is a different font from this. Whenever we change the font down here, it just changed the font in the body of the essay. We need to change the font in the header as well because you don't want your last name and page number to be a different font from everything else. So make sure you highlight this. I double tapped it double clicked on it you could also hit shift and and select everything you know hit edit select all whatever you want to do just make sure you select it and then click on times new roman it should be right there in your recent fonts now in in word i see a lot of students changing their last name and then look it didn't even change the page number so that's that's upsetting but anyways i don't know why they do that but click on your page number two click on your page number also and then change that font. Oh, there we go. Some students have had problems with that. I think you actually, you not only click on it, but you, you also need to hit shift and then hit the right arrow. And notice how it kind of turned blue. Uh, click on, clicking on it isn't enough, apparently. You also need to highlight it. So now I've got it selected. I've got it highlighted. There we go. I hit Times New Roman. So now it's the correct font. Uh, the page number is supposed to be one over from here. So you're actually going to need to go ahead and click on that, hold down, and drag it over. And there we go. I think that looks about right. Maybe I could get it just a little bit closer. You don't want it too close. You just want it to be look like it's one space away from your last name. Um, I don't know why they they have it set that way so that it doesn't just appear next to your name like it should but there there we go there we uh and to get out of your uh, get to get out of the header you just double click out of there um, another way to do it is to click this close header and footer but now now that i've done that and it might seem like a lot of trouble right instead of just typing your last name and hitting tab till it goes all the way to the right but the reason why we insert that last name and page number in that way is because now as i write my essay Whenever I get to the second page, you know, I'm writing, I'm writing, and then my writing spills over into a second page, it's going to automatically enter my last name and page number on that page, okay? Now, I want to show you one thing you don't want to do. The reason why I had you, let me delete this. The reason why I had you um, do the insert page number 
is because uh, if you if you write your last name and then you just manually put one here, notice that if you manually type in one there, when you go to the second page, it's it's just going to say one. Okay, you know when you type in your last name, it's going to put in your last name on every single page after that. Uh, it's how it does. And anything you type in there, it's just going to put that on every single header, on every single page of the essay. So that's why we did the insert style. Now, you know, and, and if you went to the second page and you're like, oh, well, let me fix this. I, I can do this. You you do that, and then you uh, you delete it and type in two. Now when you go back to the first page, it's going to say two as well. You just changed it in every single header, okay? That's why you have to do it this way. You have to um, do page number and insert it that way okay and and there we have it again um, I have to change it to oh let me back this up I have to change it to to the Times New Roman formatting and all that Oh, now I'm not sure what, you know what, I'm just, I'm not sure how to fix it now that I've messed it up. There we go. I've just, I just went backwards. So now we, we just have our, our one back and it's in Times New Roman. Okay. But that's how you set up the whole essay from scratch. Okay. Now, um, if you are in a comp class and they have you do a research paper and you're citing sources, you're going to need a works cited, uh, page. If you're, if you're in any advanced class more than comp one like comp two or anything or in history class or whatever usually you're going to be writing research papers and you anytime you use an outside source you need to provide an in-text citation and you need to put the bibliographical information for that source in a works cited page as the last page of the essay okay you can't just start a works cited page on any old page in your essay i can't just start works cited right here it has to be a separate page and it has to be the last page of the essay. Okay. Now, some people do what I just did and they type in works cited and I, I think they just hit enter until it goes down to its own page. That's one way to do it, but that's the hard way. Okay. The easy way to do a works cited page is to insert a page break. And you can do this several ways in Word as well. You can go all the way to the top, click on insert, go to break and hit page break. Or you can go to this insert uh, uh, menu right here. And uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Insert pages page break. Okay. Now, um, let me back up. You don't want it. You want to make sure that you put your uh, pointer at the last line of your essay. If I started a page break in the middle of a sentence, Notice that it'll split the sentence in two. One half will be up there, the other half will be down there. So you want to make sure you go to the last line of your essay, click on Pages, and Page Break. Now let me scroll back up here and show you. Uh, the page break is invisible, but if you hit Shift and right arrow, you'll see that I'm highlighting this our invisible page break. What happens is everything that you type uh, on this side of the page break stays up here. Everything you type on the other side of the page break stays on this on the separate page, okay? And that's how you start a, a, a works cited page. Um, so you go to home, you go to center, type in works cited, okay? If you did a works cited page and you only had one source you needed to write on it, then you actually, you would just do works cited. But if you have more than one source, then you do works cited, okay? And this is just like the other one. You hit enter once, go back to a line left. I've already copied and pasted some sources, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. But obviously, you would, you know, you would go ahead and write all these out. Uh, now, in the works cited page, I, in this video, I'm not showing you how to do these entries. MLA has its own way of doing things that you... Uh, need to put on each entry, whether it's a book, whether it has more than one author, whether uh, you got it from the internet. There's all sorts of rules about that, but you have to learn that in class. But I just wanted to say a couple things. For one, your work cited goes as the first thing on this page, okay? And it's all double spaced, just like just like anything else. 
this is actually three entries. You see, uh, you do the, the title of the book in italics. This is three separate entries. It's just that this, this entry goes, takes up two lines, and so does this, okay? Now, a lot of students, I think, because the first line of every paragraph gets indented, they think that they need to hit tab right here, but that's incorrect. The author's last name starts all the way a line to the left. You see, this starts, this starts at the very beginning after our one-inch margin, okay? Now, if your entry goes into a second line, what happens in MLA formatting is that the second, third, fourth line of an entry, any any line after the first line needs to be indented a half an inch. So you can't just hit tab. Oh, you can now. Okay. In in uh, in older versions of in older versions, I think it was different. Okay. Yeah. No, it was just because I had hit enter in a previous program. Okay. So yeah, if I type this out and I just tried to hit tab on this line, it's going to, it's going to indent the entire entry and you don't want that. Okay. To indent your second line, there's actually two ways of doing it. One is you can drag this a half an inch over and then every time you, um, Every time your second line spills over, it'll do that. But let, that's a little advanced. Let's not worry about that. The, the way I've always done it, I think the easiest way to do it, is to hit Enter and then hit Tab. If you don't hit Enter, like I said, it indents the whole thing. But if you hit Enter and then Tab, it indents that line. Okay? And then I can do the same thing here. Enter and then Tab. And then... The, like I said, the second and following lines of every entry should be indented a half an inch. And then you keep, you know, you keep uh, entering in all your entries. The by All of your entries should be alphabetical order by the last name. So you see this is in alphabetical order, so that's correct. But yeah, that, this is it. Um, just your basic MLA formatted essay. I hope this video helps you. I wish you the best of luck with all your writing, and uh, let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or if there's a program I haven't covered that you would like to see a video on. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day.